When I first entered Stanford and Imperial, I was surprised at how many of us studied so similarly. And I'm not talking about the visual, audio, kinesthetic way of learning, I'm talking about like the studying technique. The study technique that I've been using all along is called the Feynman Technique, and I didn't know how famous it was, I didn't know the name of it. But the details of the Feynman Technique is not something that I use very often. Instead, I've used the Feynman Technique but with a little bit of twist in it. And I found this twist quite important to me because it adapted to my engineering education. I'm gonna break down this technique into key elements that made our studying stories a success. The first element is understanding and understanding is the most important element of all. You need to understand the material before you can do anything such as projects or assignments and I take different methods to better understand the materials that's given to me such as books, application in real life or even YouTube. So how do I deeply understand this material so well that I can translate them into real life applications or even to study for the exams that's coming up soon? There are methods called active recall and space repetition and these two methods are something Something that I use very often. To dial back a little bit, active recall is the act of recalling information and knowledge from memory. That can be in the form of testing yourself or even looking at applications and reminding you about that particular concept. For example, my understanding towards buckling in real life is quite strong because I see applications all around us. And there are many methods to active recall. You can test yourself with practice such as practicing with practice papers or even solving problems of questions that's given to you and those work very well for mathematical and physics concepts. You can also find relatable applications in your everyday life. Well, such as for buckling, it is not just on rulers, but it is everywhere, such as bridges and even bookshelves. Sometimes instead of observing what is around us, figuring out more intricate systems and finding how interconnected they are can be helpful for you. So examples like this are ways that I transcend information and knowledge from books into real life applications. And for heavy content subjects like biology or maybe humanities, and using flashcards like Anki app might be really good for you. I think it helps to build a core foundation of definitions and concepts really quickly. And personally, I rewrite all my notes and what I do is that I look at topic haters and once I look at the topic haters, I recall everything and write down all the relevant equations and concepts that might be tested in exams or even finding applications in real life. And after writing them down, I try to compile them into a sheet so that I can see what I'm lacking in. I also use sketch notes to help me to see everything in a bigger picture and I think that's really necessary necessary at time. We see all these concepts individually and sometimes it might be hard for us to understand how it might implicate the bigger systems. So creating sketch notes really helped me to doodle, make me visualize concepts, visualize applications, visualize equations and see how they might work with each other. Those are ways that I find how equations and concepts can be interconnected to each other. What really helped us is really seeing how all this information and how all this knowledge transcend from books to reality. Sometimes sticking to pen and paper is really helpful but it is really limited in terms of how much you can find a relationship with reality. And the best way to see a bigger picture is real life applications. So this is how education can help us illuminate our conceptual understanding and applying it to real life, which is really helpful when we get out of school. Apart from active recall, there's something called the space repetition that I use very often as well. Scientifically, there are research showing that we need to space out our revisions so that we can remember our information longer and better in the long run. And there's something called a forgetting curve and what we're trying to do is really just to prolong this forgetting curve so that we can remember and retain information for a longer period of time. So some of us have made spreadsheets and calendars to help us to remind ourselves to recall information and knowledge, but I don't do that at all. Instead, I do a different method, which is the rotation method. Since mechanical engineering is such a broad topic, what I do is that I study everything on a rotation basis. On each day, I would touch on two different causes. What I do is that on day one, I'll touch on cause A and cause B. On day two, I might touch on cause C and D. And on third day, I might touch on cause E and cause A. And I'll go on so on and so forth until when my revision ends. And this is a twist that I use from the space repetition that we all know of. It is really passive and you don't need a lot of planning and it becomes a cycle later on. Another reason why I want to touch on at least two different subjects in a day is to prolong my attention span. Research has shown that it is much better to do different causes in the same day rather than to prolong and cramming one course on one day itself. Ultimately for me, what I'm trying to do is to find a relationship of all these different subjects that I'm studying. The degree is something that bridge all these individual subjects all together even though we might study them individually. This is something that helps me to keep studying a lot more interesting and become more curious and more intrigued 
critique about the systems around us. In a second element, it is to help your peers. During our revisions, I've always been helping my friends in topics that they struggle to understand. And on the other hand, when I struggle to understand certain topics, they will definitely help me too. Teaching someone goes beyond just making someone understand the applications and the concepts. Showing them definitions and equations will definitely not help them in understanding these concepts that you are trying to teach. What it means to teach someone is to decompress the material, find relatable points that you and your other friends have. And once you find these relatable points, you try to bridge this and to get them to understand where you're coming from. It is essentially taking a notch of complexity down before you bring them up to your level of understanding again. For example, you might need to find applications that both of you can see. And that is a great way to start introducing topics for them to better understand it. Another method that I use is mind maps and sketch notes. My maps and sketch notes get everything out in a big picture so you can find the relationships to visualize all these concepts all together. It really helps to scope out all the depth you don't want and to understand the concept in a bigger picture before you fill it up with deeper details that you might need later on. When you're teaching someone, you're also reflecting on the knowledge that you have to understand the material. And the last element is to explore. Now that you've understood and explained to your peers, you might want to take a notch up and challenge yourself. There are opportunities in school, like research or even interning with industry partners, and that probably helps you to extend your information to real life applications. Beyond that, you can also challenge yourself with harder materials. I think those are ways that you can fill yourself with more information and more knowledge that keeps you curious about what is out there in the world. But there is more beyond that. The subjects that we study are everywhere and there are implications of certain approaches that we learn in school that might not work in real life. For example, although I'm really interested in engineering concepts, I'm also interested in the human psychology in product design in engineering. Even though they might not relate a lot, I see that technology might not be the main driver of consumer change. What make us change as consumers to new product are circumstances and habits. The room to explore with what you know is as expensive as it is. And because I found empowerment from engineering, I felt excited to help people in society with engineering knowledge and the soft skills like logical thinking and creativity. My undergraduate in Imperial is probably one of the most brutal curriculum that I ever saw and I ever experienced and I think that's something that challenged me rigorously. On the other hand, my postgraduate in Stanford really made me realize of how engineering can extend into not just engineering but all aspects of real life. Both school really tested me rigorously and challenged my perspective when I was there. However, these tips followed me throughout my my academic journey. So what about you? What study techniques do you have? Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something from this video. I'll catch you another time. I'll see you around. Bye!